Today's mostly going to be about Metro, uh, but there's some other stuff too. And Yoichi had um, some questions that kind of dive into how we're implementing some of the EIPs in Metro. So that's the main stuff today. Uh, let's start with agenda item one. Uh, so that's going to be EIP 186. Uh, the last call we had talked about um, discussing it a little bit further um, between uh, before th this call to see if there was uh, any other opinions and also to get some of the opinions of the researchers who were in Malta last time. So uh, just a quick overview of what's happened since then. Um, I there hasn't I was going to put a Reddit post out about it, but then I kind of saw, you know, people in the thread about the last discussion notes from the last All Core Dev meeting, uh, talking about it, and you know, there weren't there wasn't a in my opinion a bunch of people who were looking to make that change. Uh, there was still to me kind of a consensus around the imp the people who would implement the code that it would be better to be risk averse in this case uh, for Metropolis coming up. So uh, let's start out with um, Yoichi and anybody in the F, uh, the Berlin office. Uh, do y'all have any opinions on it? Uh, anybody who wasn't here last time or any new opinions? I'm with the... Anyone want to see it? Maybe nothing. Oh, say that one more time. I couldn't hear. <laughs> Maybe nothing. Nobody's saying nothing. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Vitalik, did you have anything? I think you discussed a little bit on Reddit, but uh, what what do you what's your view on it? Yeah, I mean, I think. Well, the view I gave in one of our Skype chats a while back is that anything like, is anything at least in for my intuition, anything over two and a half is like safe enough. But going beyond that will, you know, like, kind of introduce at least some risks um, for just from a safety standpoint. Okay. And so what would you say about the need to put it into Metropolis? Is there is there really one at this point, or is this something that should be addressed for a different hard fork or not at all? I mean, the reward is going to come down anyway once we start, start the proof-of-stake switch. Um... So it's like it's it's not the sort of thing that uh let's see how should I say this like a practi I mean practically speaking like the difference between cutting it down to like even to take the bottom end two and a half and five, and uh, just pushing it all the way back up to five in, um in, in inside of metropolis is only going to be something like uh a couple million, uh, maybe two or three million ether. So, it's, uh, so it sounds like it's not really something that's that important or applicable for Metro. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not that important or applicable either way. Though, on the other hand, like, given that we're going to be mucking around with mining rewards anyway in the, because we're uh, delay, delaying the Ice Age, like, it's, I don't, you know, like, I don't see an extremely strong case in either direction, I guess. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking the same way, and in most cases, I feel like the status quo for when that happens within hard forks that I've seen is that when it's kind of not that's strong in either direction and there's no one really um and, and then i don't there's no people who are going to implement it really championing the idea that it probably should just kind of remain in discussion um overall or be delayed for a different thing uh, does anyone else in the room have a different uh perspective or any other opinions No, I'd say just uh, keep keep an uncontroversial hard work as uncontroversial as possible. Yeah, I I would tend to agree with that. Um, so yeah, I think that's the end of that um, discussion point. Then 
let me see real quick something. I just lost my agenda here. Cool. All right. So the next agenda item. Um, so this one Yoichi brought up. Um, EIP 86, uh, which is um, talking about the create instruction. Uh, he was saying that there were some discrepancies between the EIP pull request as written and the implementations across clients. Uh, Yoichi, do you want to expand on that a little bit? Yes, so this EIP is about uh, account abstraction and as part of that uh, specification point three talks about changing the way uh, it calculates the address of new contracts. But interestingly, it only talks about create transactions but not about create instructions. So when the EVM hits a create instruction, it does create something, but it's not a create transaction. So it, there's some ambiguity if this EIP changes both create transaction and create instruction, or it does just change the create transaction and we keep the create instruction as it is. It seems like, well, literally the EAP text looks like, looks like it changes only the create transactions, not instructions. But all the implementations I saw uh, kind of agreed on changing both, uh, especially the create instruction. So I need some clarification which way we are following. I mean, due to the fact that we also add a new uh, creation opcode in this uh, proposal, then the this means that the old creation opcode retains its semantics. Uh, so, yes, Christian made an argument for one option, and that's why I yeah. chose the same in the yellow paper pull request. But Alex had a different argument. Maybe it's a good. It's better to keep create instruction as it is because when we change that, we might break some existing contracts. So I kind of need clarification here. But changing the external, so the create transaction is an external interface to Ethereum. Okay, I'm back to life. We break contracts. Pardon? I don't think this one is working. Okay. Um, could, could, Chris, could you elaborate? What's that about the new create opcode? Uh, yes, so if this same EAP um, talks about creating a new kind of create instruction uh, where uh, different sources can deploy the same code on different, different addresses. Uh, it's called uh, create p2sh or something. So yes, this yeah. EAP introduces yeah. a new instruction. So the intention of the EAP seems to be that the create stays as it was before. Correct. Uh, right. And so, do we have someone who would champion the case why create would change? Um, so basically the idea in general is that we want it to be possible to, well, or in like possible and very easy to ha create, they like have ad um, addresses that are very specifically bound to one particular piece of code. And so that people can either like send money or send tokens or do other things to those addresses before the accounts are, are, are get created. And the problem with the current creation, uh, contract creation approaches is that because the address only depends on the sender and the nonce, there's like the, basically it's the, the actual contents of all the addresses are under the full control of the sender. 
because the sender gets to um, like put whatever they want into the yeah, creation code uh, into the contract code, and it's still the same address either way. So this would so this EIP would be yeah, addresses code dependent and. This actually would allow you to create contracts where, like, the the addresses for those contracts do depend just on uh, on what the code is. So, like, one ex one user story for this, for example, is uh, let's say I have no money and I want to start receiving money, but I also do not I, I, like I do not want to have an account that uses. Um, regular ECDSA, I might want to directly have a multisig, or I might want to directly have something based on Lamport signatures or whatever else. So what I would do is I would privately kind of simulate the creation of the contract, privately like figure out what the um, address would be with that piece of code. Then I would give people that address, and people could send money to that address. And then when there's enough money in the address, then you could uh, uh, create the contract and uh, basically, and pay out of out of that money as a fee as a fee going to the miner. Um, that, that that story can go with the external accounts and the contracts both. So uh, so this kind yeah. of doesn't answer um, this specific question. If the create instruction will change. So okay. So first of all, there's. There's two ways to create contracts, right? So one of them is externally, and one of them is through the create opcode. So part of uh, like part of that EIP is um, accounts that the 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 scheme for addresses that get created externally gets changed. Um, but f as far as the create opcode, I think the main reason to change that is well, there's two main reasons. One of them is consistency, and the other is so that. Um, the scheme, like the scheme, works even if it's contracts that are creating other contracts and not just uh, like me mechanisms from the outside. Okay, so actually, I don't need a really strong argument for changing the create instruction. I just needed the clarification, hmm? and uh, I got the clarification now. And I think this EIP request text can be improved, but uh, I don't think the, the already done implementations need to change that, so I'm happy about this. So uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with this point, agenda number uh, three. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. Hudson can take, take over. Yeah, well, I'll just, uh, just to clarify. Uh, Yurishi, yep. as I read the comment that you put on the agenda, um, yep. so do these implementations, these pull requests, change the create instruction, or do they add a new a new create instruction? Um, they add a new create they instruction do. in the old they ones. Yeah. Yeah. So the old one is retained. Yes. The old one. Is there, but uh, yep. the old one create the old one creates accounts in a different position after Metropolis. Yeah. But no, no. The oh, hold on. The old create opcode should still create accounts in the same position, right? Oh, on the same position. Okay. Then, okay, I misunderstood you. In that case, uh, uh, the CPPSLM pull request should be updated, and the parity uh, implementation should change. The, the opcode gets a new name, but the same number. Did I understand it correctly? No, that's not correct. Uh, the old create is still the old create. Okay. New create PSH, uh, P2SH, different creation address. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong with that. So, yeah, so uh, the, old, the behavior of the old of the old create opcode is unchanged, and a new cre a create opcode is created with equivalent functionality, except a different address. Uh, address. I yeah. See. So now I hear the old create instruction 
will not change its behavior. I see. Okay, then um, with this, I will poke imp implementers and say that, and I raise issues and comments on mainly CPPSLM and parity. I have a related question, though, um, to this proposal. Um, what happens if I could address a contract somewhere? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I later on self-destruct that contract. Then you can create yet another contract at the same address. You can do that. Or you cannot. With this, with no, with this opcode, yes. So, all right. So you don't actually know that. Um, I mean, it can vary from transaction to transaction whether that address actually holds some code or not, theoretically. Yes. Right. Just curious. Now we can carry on. Okay, mm -hmm. I'd like to clarify a few things. So after Metropolis, there will be three ways an address for a new contract is generated. First, with the create transaction uh, that generates an address from the code hash. Second is the create opcode that generates it by ROP concatenate, concatenating sender mm -hmm. and what not. And mm -hmm. the third way is create a, a new create instruction that generates it from yes. white concatenating sender. And, yeah, okay, that's clear. And the second question I get that you mentioned a use case when the account receives some balance and only after that a contract is created for that for that address yes so how would is that possible to so create instruction can create well basically doesn't check if the account exists just checks for the code mm -hmm. is that correct yeah okay that's clear thanks Okay, awesome. So the next item is, so that clears up um, what is number two on the agenda. Um, change the address and screen create. Okay, so um, Yochi also had another comment in here about um, the some of the accepted EIPs are not yet specific enough to form a protocol consensus. So what's the next action? And he gives three examples. Uh, Yoichi, do you want to just uh, go through those as well? So um, there are certain accepted EIPs, and uh, I assume we are seeking to implement those for Metropolis. But some of these have some missing numbers and so on. Um, the, so the first thing is uh, for the elliptic curve related stuff. Um, we don't have the gas prices yet. And another mm -hmm. thing is for the uh, uh, block head uh, abstraction thing, we don't still have the getter code. Get the byte code. Um, okay, um, so regarding the um, gas costs for pairings, I think the reason why that hasn't been specified yet is because, I mean, like Christian has come up with uh, some like, possibilities for the gas price, but the reason we haven't set things in stone yet is because we wanted to see how uh, we wanted to get benchmarks on the go ver on like the parity version and the go version, and uh, see like see how long it takes you know, before we make a final decision. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that so that that's kind of solved by just uh, as things go on, like it's accepted, but then we're going to just tweak that at the end once we get the um, yeah. stuff going. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like if we need, if we need to do it for testing purposes, then we could just like agree on some temporary gas price now, but then if it's just for testing, then we might as well make it zero. Sure. Sure. I, I, no problem really. Um, I, I, I just thought sure. uh, we should have these texts ready and pretty before we right. actually perform stuff. That, that, that was my assumption and uh, okay. I, I kind of tried to find missing mm -hmm. things. 
Okay, cool. So it sounds like um, just looking over the list, I, the pairing check and the group addition on elliptic curve are things that sound like it's going to come with time, but that we can put kind of a temp value in. Uh, the thing with the getter code on uh, EIP 96, is that something that's the same case or something that can be answered? Um, for EIP 96, it's, um, I mean, I can provide a, a, a get, I mean, at least uh, one version of the getter code. Hold on. It's, it should be up here somewhere. It, I don't see. I mean, I don't see it right now, but I, but I can provide that. That's fine. Okay, sounds yes. great. Okay. Yes. Then these points are resolved. All right. Great. So yeah. the next thing uh, would be removing med state from receipts. Um, so that is EIP ninety eight, which yeah, EIP ninety eight. It looks like there's a difference in implementation between um, uh, Go and CPP or Go and CPP P do it one way and Parity does it another. So um, EIP ninety eight is the one that makes uh, that that removes the intermediate state root, correct? Yes, that's correct. So um, looking at this, is there? Let me see if there's any indication. Or uh, Andre, you're in the room. Uh, would you be able to uh, talk about what the difference is? Uh, do you hear me? Hello? Yeah, can you hear? Yep, we can hear you. Um, so there are two options in the EIP specification. One is removing the root hash altogether from the RLP structure. Another one is replacing it with zero hash. So yeah, and uh, looking at the code, I've noticed that parity seems to uh, modified RLP structure and we and go uh, just uh, uh, replace it with zero hash. So we should uh, come to some agreement here. Yeah, so we choose to remove it completely because it seemed more cleaner. And we already deployed it on common network, so we prefer to keep it that way. Well, yeah, uh, I agree that has... removing is better. <laughs> It's it's nice to have smaller receipts. I mean, it, it would be kind of pointless to like put thirty two bytes of zeros into every single receipt just because you know it used to be there. So I I agree with removing. Cool. Uh, does CPP have any comments? Okay, I think it's not going to be a big problem for us to remove it. Also, so yeah, I agree. All right. Cool. Great. So that that part's covered. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all of the um, questions. Uh, oh, there there is one on the blockchain and state root changes. So EIP um, 96, I think it might be numbered 86. Uh, Pavel asked about keeping the addresses of pre-compiled contracts continuous. Why are we jumping from uh, contract 10 to contract 20? I can post the link to the comment, but I was kind of curious about that too. Is there a reason for the um, jump? Right. So my reason, my reasoning for making them separate is because these, like the um, addresses for EIP ninety six, like they're not. It's not actually a real precompile. It's just a plain old regular contract with a piece of plain old regular code that happens to have like a privileged status in the protocol. Like I'd be happy having the address be pretty much anywhere, but it's still a kind of different kind of thing. Okay, got it. Sounds good. Yeah, so a related question to this EAP. So the contract mm -hmm. is inserted into the state when the transaction happens, and it changes the state root. Is that correct? Um, hold on. So can you repeat that? Uh, so the block hash managing contract, mm -hmm. when the metropolis transition happens, mm -hmm. it is inserted into the state and changes correct. the state root. Yes, it's inserted into the state in the exact same way as uh, the DAO fork uh, moved ether around. So again, that ex in the exact same kind of position. Okay, so it's not a precompile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh... Okay. Great. Um, so the next item and the last official item are the Metropolis updates. So I think the best way to do this is to start with Dimitri. 
uh, what we're wanting to get with this update is figure out where each client is at and get an update on the test. Um, uh, and we've already kind of, uh, another note I put in there was that some EIPs are accepted but not specific enough to form protocol consensus. Um, you know, Ichi made that comment earlier, so what's the next action? And it sounds like just cleaning them up, so uh, just being more vigilant in the EIPs to make sure that they are um, that they are matching implementation and um, the actual EIP spec. Uh, so for this, oh, did anyone have comments on that? Cool. Okay, so um, on the testing update, Dimitri, you're at the Berlin office, right? And yes, that's right. I'm here in Berlin. Perfect. Okay, so uh, just if you give us an update on the testing, um, anything changed from last time and kind of the progress and where we're at? Yes, it was a person who uh, asked me to update the format of all of the tests. Uh, so the so the t test fields will be prefixed by zero uh, x all of the hex fields all of the hashes and so on. So I was working on that and um, mostly uh, all of the tests now will be in this format. And some minor change about uh, making all fields prefixed with zero x. And uh, you could see that. And uh, Jan is implementing these new changes to. Uh, create instruction and uh, yeah next thing I plan to do is uh, to make test coverage for this uh, new EIP 86 realization of point three and four. Okay great and then is there anything um, that we want to or is there anything that um, you need from the other core developers is there any other comments you have about this that can kind of help you and is there a I don't know if this is really applicable because I'm not as familiar with um, how the testing infrastructure works but is there a like percentage done for testing for a lot of these Metropolis EIPs that are completed spec wise? Yes there is a file uh, on Google Docs that I posted you uh, last time we're keeping updates to that file and um, you could track which test cases were already implemented, they marked again. And uh, those that are right are still not done and should be done and as soon as possible. Also, there is a to-do uh, list and um, uh, that's uh, the task that I'm working on right now or in the future. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that document uh, here. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, all right, great. So let me just make sure I can get out of this. Oh, and then I just broke my thing just a second. Okay, fixed it now. Um, okay, cool. Nick just joined. Um, Nick, if you go into the agenda, we just went over a um, pretty much items one and two, and then any of the comments that Yoichi and Andre had. Um, so if you have any questions about any of those, uh, let us know kind of at the end of the call, but all of them are resolved pretty much. All right, thanks. Sorry for my tardiness. And no problem. So uh, post of Metropolis test, so it looks like we have an update on that. Um, if there aren't any more general comments or things about that, we'll move on to the clients. Um, so let's see, let's start with um, Go. Uh, so the Go client, wh what is the update on implementing Metro? I think there's still that um, PR with the checklist uh, for what's been implemented, but are there any comments or um, questions or any showstoppers for implementing it that you want to discuss? Oh, actually, I'm looking now. Do we have anyone from the Go team? I think Felix left. That's me. Oh, Nick. Yeah, duh. So yeah, Nick, what's uh, do, you, do you have an idea of the update for Metro implementation for Go? 
Um, the last I heard from uh, Jeff, he was most more or less done. Uh, he's got two PRs out, one to do some refactoring, one to implement the actual Metropolis stuff. Uh, I don't have a more detailed insight into whether that's 100% or just 90%. Okay, great. Yeah, that's 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 a fine enough approximation for this call. And looking at the PRs, I I, I browsed them I think a few days ago. It's it seemed like it was more or less done. Um, so uh, that's go. Uh, now we'll do parity. Yeah. So we're mostly done. There's just one EAP that needs to be implemented. That is. Return data, size of whatever. No. And yeah, that's it. Okay, great. And then um, we'll wait a second. Um, the Berlin uh, team is got dropped off the call, and then they're going to be added back on. Uh, Jan, uh, do you have updates for the clients you work on? Uh, well, there there's no active development on Ruby Seven. Now and uh, I and I and my team is working on PySerum. Uh, PySerum has a uh, I have merged state revamp with PV sixty two branch and it's running well on a server now. Uh, there is a PyNode which is currently at about two point seven million blocks and is continue. Uh, processing blocks and uh, and we are also working on that P2P we are adding an AT uh, function to that P2P so so you can run a pi node from a from your home from your home local network and we are adding concurrent syn synchronizing to uh, WP of Python, of PyNode. So basically, we are trying to um, we are trying to fix PyNode so it can keep up with other uh, implementations like Gas, and then I think we can uh, start to implement Metropolis features. Okay. Um, I started, I've started implementing at least the some Metropolis features. So the revert opcode is passing all the tests. I mean, like there is an implementation of, EA, of EIP86, although it, it is a bit old, so I'm not so it may not be fully compliant with all the latest stuff that we've agreed on. But that'll be very easy to change once the tests are there. Um, there's EIP in 90, uh, 96 and 98 are theoretically implemented back from about a year ago when I was doing some uh, some tests for uh, some experimentation for Casper but it just needs to be like reparameterized a bit um, the yeah, the pairing stuff is like it's done as a piece of as a piece of code but it still needs to be kind of plugged in and made into a proper precompile um, then on the I mean, there are a couple of yet. There are still a couple of VIPs that aren't done as well, or that aren't done. So, static call is not done. A couple others aren't done either. Okay, sounds great. Um, thanks for the update on that. Um, and then uh, we have the Bar Berlin team back. So, if I could get updates on C plus plus, and then um, Martin BZ, if you want to give an update for JS, I didn't. Um, know if the priority was more on the EWASM side or uh, implementing Metro or, and that kind of stuff. So we'll start with the C++ team. They probably have some connectivity issues still in the, oh. in the room. That's so, true. Uh, um, here, here's uh, Pavel compiled the list of uh, of uh, progress. Yeah, here I send the link. So yeah, in general, we kind of still halfway through all of them. Three IPs are still not started. Uh, uh, three are already implemented and merged, and several in progress. Okay, great. Yeah, this is this is a good list. Um, cool. 
So they're mostly all in progress, and there's just a couple not started, more than likely pending some of the final specs. Uh, great. And then uh, if uh, Berlin, if you get back online, just get off mute and uh, let it, let me know that you're on, and then I can um, see about the JavaScript. Yeah. Code. Oh, you're back. Uh, great. Yeah, my, my Wi-Fi. Cool. Hey, is, Ma the minute. is Martin there? Or Martin Beasy specifically. What? You should give an update about Ethereum JS related activities. Uh, right now I'm just adding, uh, working on adding the Elon backend to Solidity through building helper functions. Uh, Ethereum JS, uh, we've been adding. Um, we haven't done any Metropolis related work so far, except uh, I've done a little bit with abstracting out how the crap presses are generated for the new crates. But that's the only, only uh, update for Metropolis made in the last two weeks. Did you hear this? Yes, yes, I heard the whole thing. Thanks, thanks so much, Martin. All right, so... We have, um, I think that's, did I miss any clients? I hope I didn't. Yeah, I think that's everybody. And um, Vitalik, you were the one who specifically raised the um, point of bringing up um, testing and specific implementations. Was this uh, satisfactory, or was there any other outstanding questions? I don't think there were any other outstanding questions, no. Okay. Um, so looking at the date... Uh, oh, by the way, well, once we wrap up the Metropolis stuff, there's an EIP 599 uh, that Nick wanted to bring up and discuss, so we'll get to that. But um, as far as having enough time to uh, throw this into the test net um, and test on stuff, should we? What's the opinion of us starting to set some um, more more strict timelines? Uh, what, right now, what we have is a kind of a tacit goal of end of June. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what are the thoughts on setting up either block numbers or getting some either dates or something together for implementing stuff on testnet? Hmm. I, per I personally feel like there's still, like, there's still a bit too much uncertainty to, uh, get this, to agree on hard dates right now. I mean, I'd prefer that we make a, that we make a commitment to, uh, just, Get stuff running and running and pass and uh, uh, passing tests so to uh, within uh, with like med medium high priority and once it's looking like we're either kind of um, all all clear or close to it then we can then we can agree on a date. All right, sounds good to me. Um, yeah, I'm um, from a from just from a kind of stand, um, ice age standpoint. I mean, difficulties continuing to go up and that is and. That is continuing to make a the a uh, a later launch of Metropolis more like more and more tolerable by at least a couple of weeks. So. Okay. Yeah. And then then there's um, and what what you're talking about, I guess, is the is the block time changing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So right now, right now, if we get the fork out by uh, June twenty, I think June twenty fifth, then and the difficulty stays as it or the hash power stays as it is now. Then the block time will actually not go above around I think nineteen seconds. Okay, cool. Um, sounds good. So yeah, that that this will be. Uh, we'll just kind of bring this up again next call and just re recalibrate to see if there's any changes for Ooh. specification needed. Sounds good. Great. All right. So Nick, um, you wanted to bring up EIP five ninety nine. Um, it's in the All Core Devs Gitter channel. Uh, and I can, I think I'll open it and paste it on the Google link as well. But uh, go, go ahead, Nick. Uh, so this is a proposal to um, add a sort of a transaction time to live field uh, to transaction RLP. Um, the goal here is that currently uh, managing transaction pools is a bit of a shit show. There's no good way to expire out old transactions. Um, and that means that attackers can potentially cause a lot more trouble in a DO, from a DOS point of view than they should be able to. Um, they can spam out transactions, and as long as the transaction remains valid and there's some balance in the account, um, we have no way to evict these 
spam transactions other than executing them. If you attempt to evict them yourself, then chances are it'll just be relayed back to you from another node that doesn't treat it as an old transaction. So what I'm suggesting is adding a field, uh, an optional final field to a transaction which specifies that the transaction must be mined before the stated block. Um, and any transaction whose uh, block number uh, is before the current block number is immediately discarded and may not be relayed. Um, and any transaction whose uh, include before block number is too far in the future uh, should be treated as um, sort of hostile and generally not relayed. Um, so the idea is that this, in addition to making uh, DOS attacks harder by limiting the maximum lifetime of the transaction, also allows people to publish transactions that they know will either be executed quickly or not at all, which is good for time-sensitive operations. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, the, I, I've tried to structure the proposal so that um, existing transactions would still be fine. So nodes have to accept um, uh, accept blocks that contain transactions with far future timestamps or with or, you know block numbers or with no block number. Um, but they will generally avoid relaying them. Uh, okay. So and this is I I think that this was brought up last meeting right when we were talking about. Um, uh, handling transaction propagation issues is this in that same category yes perfect okay um, so in this EIP is this something that you were thinking of having um, is this in like metropolis or just something to kind of work on between now and when we would want to implement it um, I mean I think it's reasonably straightforward so Optimistically, it'd be nice to include it in Metropolis, but I think that depends on what implementers think uh, of, you know, how con how contentious it is, and uh, what implementers think in terms of how hard it will be. Okay, so um, I think that, um, yeah, I think that this can be brought up in more detail next meeting. As far as this meeting goes, does anyone have any initial reactions for um, thoughts on it, uh, whether it's a good idea and complexity? For implementation? Um, yeah, so as far as implementation complexity goes, I'd have a preference that if we're going to start mucking around with transaction formats to a greater extent than EIP86 does, then like we may as well do it properly. And what I mean is that we may, like, I have, a, like, as one example of a, a sort of thing that I would like, is I just sent, sent a, a draft EIP for where we kind of uh, change around transaction type, uh, transaction formats. And the idea is that we you know, that we have a more kind of regular way of including um, transaction version numbers and uh, transaction network IDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, do you have you written up a draft for that already, or? Yeah, like it's uh, number two thirty two. Oh, okay. Great. Is there any other comments from any of the other uh, devs? Yeah, uh, I want to add a comment that I I think this change is also good for um, DApp developer uh, for for DApps because um, there's a problem for for the the system outside uh, Ethereum now is that when when you send a transaction you are not sure uh, when when will your transaction be um, be included into the blockchain. And and until you see your transaction on the chain, you you don't know uh, if you should send another uh, transaction or or just wait. So with such a um, change, I think you can you only need to wait for a certain amount of time, and and that's very useful. Okay, cool. Yeah, good comment. I, I agree with that. I think it would be very useful. Um, so just for the implementation stuff on this, th this would require a hard fork, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody, any other dev uh, comments on this? So I feel we should do the, uh, the um, uh, transaction field simplification thing. Uh, and so I feel like I mean it was uh, it was proposed by Vitalik. I can't I don't have the link right now, but I feel that you know this would be more appropriate. So adding fields to transactions is uh, in general 
like I mean special purpose fields adding special purpose fields to transactions is kind of uh, yeah weird I, I guess from an implementation perspective I mean, I wouldn't call it a particularly special purpose field, but I agree that if we have an idea for a more general abstraction, then that's better, a better idea. No. Okay. So so that would be just instead of having, like, adding a new field every time you want to add functionality, but, but just doing a kind of field you can put whatever you want and then have some standards around that? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's... So there's two ways of kind of abstracting this, right? So one of them is that we uh, like do basically Nick's like Nick's proposal, but we do it in do it inside of uh, my suggestion for uh, changing transaction formats. And the benefit there is just that basically makes it easier for us as uh, as protocol developers to uh, change transaction formats in the future. I mean, the other proposal is that we don't bother for now, but instead we uh, Make um, the uh, like maximum block field a uh, block number field part of uh, EIP eighty six transactions that we would uh, and just like recommend people to add a ch add a checker for the max block number in the validation code. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So in general, I, I, I support the proposal. So this is maybe was not clear before, but I do support this proposal as an implementer because uh, there is really no way, like Nick has, has, has it right, there is really no way to like put a limit on transactions at the moment. And so mm -hmm. this helps. Yeah. Well, I will, so I'll read uh, Vitalik's uh, 232 and reread 208 slash 86 and uh, update my proposal accordingly for the next meeting. Okay, great. Because yeah, if we if we start consolidating the other EIPs that were kind of trying to tackle similar problems, I, I think that would um, be make it make it a better case to include in Metro potentially. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Um. Also, one other thing that we get though is that there is an, another. Given that we and if we do have a bit of time before like metro becomes necessary, I mean one way that we could use that time is to include more. But the other approach we could take is to be a bit more conservative and like take an take an extra month to do security audits of everything. Yes, so, yeah. I, I'm generally on board with the the more cautious approach. Um, on the other hand, um, I do think we do have a, a real potential DOS issue here, but we are fortunate nobody's exploiting. So. Um, That's right. Mm -hmm. I think we have to we have to balance like if we can do it simply and in a way that we're confident does not add lots of complexity then it's probably worth doing. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think we'll, when we have more information next meeting about the changes you've made uh, that'll that'll help a lot and we can start making some firmer decisions on uh, timing of implementation since it seems like it's been accepted so far. Cool. Oh, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, were there any other um, non-agenda topics or comments or anything anyone has? Not right now. No. Okay, great. So I think that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming, and uh, keep up with the EIPs, um, uh, especially keeping them updated and getting the specs uh, validated so that we can start um, shoring up the implementation and the testing on them. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody. Have a great weekend, and uh, see you next meeting. Next meeting. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.